Hey everyone, it's Mimsy here. I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to make these cute Halloween napkins with a frayed edge. These are super simple napkins. With that frayed edge, there's no hemming or anything. You just put a simple row of stitching all the way around the napkin and then fray the edge of the napkin up to the row of stitching. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is wash and dry your fabric so that it'll be pre-shrunk. Go ahead and square up your fabric and I'll put a video above on how to cut fabric straight and square and then you're ready to go. Okay, now that I've got my fabric squared up, I've got two layers here and I've got my selvages cut off. I'm going to go ahead and cut this into three equal pieces, which will give me six squares for my napkins. So um, this is 50, no it's Fifty-two inches. So I'll divide that by three. So that's like seventeen and a third each. So okay. Alrighty. So seventeen and a third. About there. And where's my cutter? And I usually use my rotary cutter. That's how I do most of my straight cuts like this. So much easier. Okay. So there's two. And I'm going to drag this down so I don't have to try to calculate. And... There we go. So now I've got my six napkins all cut. And now I'm going to take these to the sewing machine and I will sew the whole um, outside edge um, line of stitching so that it'll hold the napkin from fraying completely. We're gonna fray it up to the stitching, but we wanna put a line of stitching in there, and I might do two lines of stitching just to hold it from fraying continually. Okay, a couple little things that I just wanted to show you. Um, I did use black thread in order to just have it disappear into the fabric so that when it starts to fray, um, you don't even see the black thread that's holding it from fraying any further. Um, and then the other thing is, is when I'm doing long straight stitching like this where I'm gonna be moving really quickly, I, I like to just put a piece of tape so that my lines stay nice and straight on each napkin and it's very easy to see it's it just makes the it, it's just way easier as a guide to see that um, than trying to follow along that little metal metal guide there so just a little tip Drop your needle in, pick up your foot and rotate your napkin so you have a nice square corner there. The other thing is, is I did reduce my stitch size a little bit. It's not on the longest stitch length, just because that I feel like will be holding the, it'll hold the frayed edges a little bit better. And back stitch, and that's it. Okay, so two napkins down, four to go. Oh, the other thing is, is I always try to batch this stuff um, or, you know, assembly line this stuff. So do all your cuts first, then sew all the edges first, then go back and fray them all, and then do all the decorative stuff last. It makes it a lot faster. Okay, so this one I'm going to make the spider web a little bit smaller so that when I fold the napkin, it'll just be right here, kind of. Even though I like this, I'm going to do show you just a little bit different way. Okay, and then when I do my straight stitches for the spider web, I do use my regular foot and with the few dogs up, obviously. And um, the few dogs engaged, so. And one other thing is I did put black thread in my um, bobbin so that the back is pretty invisible. Although it looks like I might need to adjust my tension a little bit. Okay, so anyway, here we go.
And you guys, you can definitely um, draw this out with white chalk and fold up your napkin so you can see, you know, what kind of design you want to do if that's the way you like to do it, if you like to really plan out your designs. By all means, use chalk and chalk it out. Okay, you guys, so here's where your free motion stitching is gonna come into play. First, you're gonna change to your quilting or your darning foot so that you have some free motion here and your feed dogs won't be pulling your fabric through. And then turn off your feed dog or lower your feed dog Okay, and then you may want to look up some spiderweb like patterns online. I've done so much spiderweb painting, face painting that I don't have any trouble with this pattern. So um, you'll wanna start on one end and go ahead and drop your needle in right on this straight line of stitching. And then you're gonna just free motion stitch this. So I'll show you, hopefully I can keep my hands out of the way so you can see it. So it doesn't need to be perfect, you guys. But see how cute that's coming along? See how, you know, these are not perfect and I might space the next one a little closer or maybe a little farther away so that it has an organic look to it. So that's all there is to it. Super cute and super simple project, you guys. You can do this.